I'm joined by Tech Invest CEO Rick Steele. Rick, thanks for joining us on the program. Good, Peter. Good to be here. Now, let's. I guess my intro was, you know, very negative. Yep. But not all hedge funds actually copped it the way that the intro suggested. How did your fund do over the, the period? Well, I guess first of all, answering the general question, um, hedge funds, of course, are much maligned in the press. Yeah, unfairly so. It goes with so. the territory, yeah, I think. Yeah. Um, but in fact, in the last couple of years, hedge funds have actually delivered. Mm. I saw the 12-month returns to May before I came in this mm. evening. Mm. And hedge funds in Australia, if you look at the um, fund monitors survey of more than 200 funds, showed them down uh, in round numbers around 10% for the year. Mm. Well, better than super funds, isn't it, really? Better than super funds. Yeah. In the market, of course, the share market's uh, down 30-odd uh, percent. Mm. Uh, amongst those, I think uh, funder funds were a bit disappointing. I think mm. funder funds were down 20%, mm. uh, and they tended to represent some of the big names in hedge funds globally. So that mm. was a bit of a disappointment. W were there some absolute shockers? I guess long-only funds would have really copped it, wouldn't they? Well, they have, there's, always, there's always funds on the ends of the distribution, yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah. And, and I even read today that uh, John Merriweather, the uh, founder of Long Term uh, Capital, mm. has gone again. He, he produced a return of minus 40 odd percent and mm. has closed his new fund. So mm. there's always going to be examples of funds that haven't done well. But I think you have to look at the industry as a whole to see how it's, how it's delivered. Okay, before we talk about hedge funds generally, just, just concentrate on yours. What, what's your fund called? We have a fund called TI Intercept Capital Fund, mm. and it's what they call a, a long-short fund, more specifically market neutral. Okay. So it's designed not to capture share market returns. Okay, so how did you do over that period? We've had a, we've had a very good year or so, and, mm. and that's not completely unexpected mm. because we've designed the fund to avoid the rises and falls of share markets. Mm. Um, that's helped through this period, mm. but also we've had a good period of stock selection, so that's enabled us to deliver return over the past year of around 11%. Plus? Plus 11%. Yeah, well, so is, is the goal that in a, in a boom maybe, when the market might go up 25%, you might only do 12 or 13, but you're cutting out the, the high losses at either, at either end of the market? I think that's right. I mean, what we're seeking to do is to produce excess returns mm but without the sort of volatility you might get from investing in raw share markets. Mm. So share markets, when they're moving higher, yeah. will deliver good returns, but you can't count on that. How does someone actually get to play ball with you? And it's one of the questions we got from one of our, our viewers last night, like how do you actually get involved with hedge funds? Well, the, the beauty of the Australian regulatory environment is if you have a, a hedge fund mm. and it's open to retail investors, then you, you pick up a, a product disclosure statement like any other fund and you can invest even for low amounts. Mm. Okay, so, so it's, a, it's, a direct, it's a direct approach f from the investor to you, to you guys? Well, it, it could be done either directly from our website, mm. which is www.techinvest.com.au, yeah. or through some of the platforms. Um, there are many ways in which you can get involved. If someone said to you, look, I'm, I'm interested in what, what you, you do, but I, I feel uncomfortable that like ratings agencies don't rate you. What's the response you, you come up with? I'm sure you must encounter that. Of course. I think, I think one of the hallmarks of the way we approach the business is that we want to be transparent. Yeah. Um, the way we manage money is a very traditional way. We do our work, we cast our net widely, we do the numbers and we pick a well diversified portfolio. Mm. We even post our portfolio on our website so you can take a look. Double click on a couple of names, mm. see what industries they're in, see the sorts of things they do. Mm. So nothing's particularly hidden and we encourage people to do that. Have a look. What's your feeling for the market right now? If you, if you looked at, say, where we are now and where you think we might be in a year's time, what's your position on the market? When I came in, I saw there was no bell on the desk to ring to <laughs> say we hit the market. Well, plenty of people have rung the bell in, in <coughs> advance. Well, I think anyone making a sensible prediction for the next few years in a wealth creation manner mm. must take into account the possibility it could be a very difficult period. Mm. For years, it mm. could be. Mm. Um, so Side, side, sideways, even a, a slight trend down could be possible. If, if you're thinking about that as a possibility, then mm. you need to look outside the traditional asset classes to get returns. Mm. And that's the sort of thing that we deliver with our market neutral fund. OK, but I'm, pu I'm putting it on the spot, because I know a lot of the viewers who watch this program want to try and get inside the head of someone like you who's, who's 
game is to watch the market, pick stocks. You're a long short fund, so you, at the moment, is your bias towards long or short? Well, our bias is to be neutral. Neutral, right? Okay. That's and, and that's the nature of the product. Yeah. So actually, it doesn't matter particularly to us whether markets rise or fall. Mm. The key thing for us is do we pick the right stocks long mm. and the right stocks short? Yeah. So it's an important question to lots of viewers, but it isn't so important for us mm. because we think we can deliver return without exposure to markets. Okay. So let, let's move away from what you're doing in your fund and just yeah. tell us what you're thinking about. You know, what are the, what are the things, you, when you wake up in the morning, what are you wanting to see um, in terms of your expectations on the market. Like for me, I want to see a really good co co uh, co company reporting season in the USA, with, particularly with um, the outlooks. And I think Alcoa today came out with a, a, a pretty good outlook, and that was a good start to, to the reporting season. But what are you thinking? Well, I'm, a, I'm a, an economist by training, so I look at the, the big picture things, and I worry. I worry that there are some things that have broken this time around. We're, mm. we're losing confidence in the way in which the general mechanisms of markets are working. Mm. I think it's going to be tough. Mm. You know, I do think there's going to be a long period of workout that could last years. Here. Mm. All right, now, when you say that, does it mean that necessarily the market won't go up, or is it possible it might only go up by four or five percent a year when we got used to 20, 25 percent? Well, if you look at some of the big market corrections in the last few years, things like the, the 29 crash in the Great Depression, yeah. the Nikkei crash of 89, the big stock the big tech wreck bubble, the recovery from those declines in an in a inflation adjusted manner has taken years, mm. 10 years, 15 years. It could easily be we're in that environment. Okay. So we need to be sure we have a portfolio that reflects that possibility. Okay. So if, if someone's watching you and says, yeah, this guy seems pretty fair dinkum, he's fund, is market neutral, he's, he seems to get his act together. How much money should they put in, in, in terms of percentage? Are you like 50% of a portfolio or are you a 10%er? Well, I'm a firm believer in diversification. I think it's the only real free lunch in this business. Yeah, without a doubt. And what you're looking for is something to change the, the characteristics of a portfolio. So it has to be meaningful. It has to be a 5 or 10% position. Mm -hmm. But, of course, you know, you need to be diversified, so I would not be recommending a 50% weight. No. So something in the order of 5 or 10% would be appropriate. Because that's the sort of thing that super funds do with the more exotic investments. And despite the fact that you, you clearly have gone for something that sounds, as you say, market mm. neutral, mm. you still could be prone to some surprise development. Yes or no? It would be unlikely, and, and it's, I say that because we have a very diversified portfolio. We would hold 30 positions on the long side of our book, 30 positions on the short side. Even if one of those, even if a long position went to zero or a short position doubled, it would be very difficult to have an, a significant impact on the return of the fund. OK, Rick, one last question. Yeah, you've, you've seen the economic data coming out from Australia. Uh, there were forecasts that unemployment could go as high as 9, 9.5%. Mm. What's your feeling? Is this a false dawn or do you think this is genuine signs that we could actually avoid a, a severe recessionary bullet? I think it's a false dawn. Do you? Um, I think there's a, there's a big workout in terms of the, uh, the policies that have been put in place to date, mm. you, you can't est underestimate what it would take to work yourself out of the current position. Mm. I, I guess I'm negative. No, well, but, but from my point of view, that's why I have people mm. like you on the program. There's a diverse point of view out there. I would prefer you to be a lot more optimistic, mate. But the reality is, you know, you're watching the market and that's what you, you believe. I think financial markets have already anticipated a substantial improvement in the, the economics that we see around us. So that has to now be proved out for it to be justified. Okay, mate. Well, thanks for joining us on uh, Switzer. I'm glad I hope to I'll see you. you again. Okay. Thanks, Peter.